Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 13 in the how to program in C Sharp course. In today's video we're going to have a look at properties also called getters and setters. And a property basically allows us to uh, kind of control how we access and change a variable. So um, that's a very loose definition, but I'll show you exactly why this is useful in just a moment. First, I quickly want to mention that if you have any questions, simply go to farm.brackies.com. Uh, you can uh, write questions there and get answers, uh, uh, find the solution to problems in your code, and even uh, suggest tutorials if you have any cool ideas. So as always, uh, let's open up Xamarin Studio. And let me give you a good example of a, um, a property that is already created for us. So when we are using C Sharp and uh, we make sure to uh, import the system namespace, uh, there's a class available to us that I haven't shown you yet. This is called the date time class and it handles everything uh, you want to do with dates and time uh, on the system. So if we want to get the current system time, we would maybe uh, create a new variable called uh, uh, current time, and uh, it should of course be of type date time, and we would set it equal to date time dot now. And you can see that uh, it tells us that this is a public static variable of type date time, and you can see in here that it says get. And that's because we are not actually allowed to change this variable. If we were able to change this, it would say both get colon uh, or semicolon, then set semicolon. But this only says get. And that means that this is a read only property. So basically, this is very, very good because it allows us to get the current time and then print it out. So let me just show you that this gets our current time. Indeed, it's uh, 7.30 and it's, uh, the date is right there. But we cannot actually change the time on our system. It would be ridiculous if every time we made a console application, we could just change the current time. So it's very good that we have this rest restriction. And as you will come to know, um, a lot of what programming is, is restricting yourself and your teammates from doing something stupid. I mean, um, when your program becomes more complex, everything is about making stuff very clear and also uh, restricting uh, you from doing uh, things you're going to re regret or which will uh, break the application. So, um, let's actually have an, uh, a look at creating our own uh, uh, property or own getter and setter. So, let's say that we are making a game and we want to create a class for our player. This is going to contain information about our players such as health and mana and run speed and all kinds of things. For now, we are simply going to focus on uh, creating a health variable for this player. So we might go in and create a public integer and call this health and set it equal to a default of a hundred. Now inside of our main, we might create a player and uh, we might call him Tom and set him equal to a new player. Like that. And uh, in here, we can both print out Tom's uh, health and we can also change Tom's health. So we could say Tom.health equals uh, 40 and we can print out Tom's health now that we've set it equal to 40. So this should print out 100 because that's what it defaults to. Set it to 40 and then print out it's, uh, the new value which is of course 40. So when we play this you can see 100 and then 40. So that works just as we uh, intended it to. But let's say that our player class gets a lot more complicated and we don't want to just uh, change the health. No, we want to create a method that damages our player because that way we can maybe create some hit particles and a, a damage um, uh, animation and a sound when the bullet hits and we can do all kinds of stuff. We don't just want to change the health behind the scenes all the time. So we maybe want to create a, a public void called damage and 
Uh, this is going to take in an integer with the damage amount. And uh, it's simply going to say that health minus equals the damage amount. And uh, this is all fine and dandy. We can go in here and we can say Tom dot damage and we can uh, maybe uh, damage him by 50 and he should have 50 uh, left. So then we can print out, uh, we can write out Tom's health after we damage him. So you can see it now says 50. And we can have all bunch of logic in here. But a problem would then be if you uh, later continued on to uh, working on something else or another uh, person on your team uh, went back to this and wanted to damage the player and instead of using tom.damage they simply went in and said tom.health minus, um, minus equals 50. Well, this is a problem because now Tom would, would lose health and uh, it wouldn't play a sound or an animation or update the uh, GUI or his health bar or anything like that. Uh, his health would simply um, uh, go down behind the scenes. And that would be an issue. So a, a, uh, what we need to do is simply restrict this from happening. So you might be thinking, well, let's just go in and make this into a private variable. And uh, that's fine, we can call tom.damage and damage him by, let's say, 30 this time. But now we are not actually able to write out his health. So, the solution to this problem is making a get only or a, um, uh, uh, yeah, a get, a, 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 an access only or a get only property. So, in order to do this, uh, we basically need to create what looks like two variables. The first one is going to be a private integer and this is the uh, and I'm going to call this underscore health because it's going to be only accessed from within our own player class. And this is going to store the actual health of our player. And therefore we can also set this equal to a default value such as 100. Then we create a public integer and this is the actual property. And this is uh, and this is not going to be underscore, this is simply going to be health. And instead of setting this equal to something or just closing this off with a semicolon, in fact, we're not going to be using a semicolon at all. Instead, we open and close two curly brackets. And I'm going to put these down on uh, some separate lines here. And inside of this, we then write get. And again, we are going to open and close some curly brackets. And then we say return underscore health. So this is a get only property. So basically what this does is it says that whenever we try to get the current health of our player, it's simply going to return the private health amount. And this means that we cannot actually change the health variable unless we are inside the same class and are able to say underscore health minus equals damage. So down here in our main method, we can now uh, damage Tom by saying Tom.damage and we can print out Tom.health, but we cannot actually say Tom.health minus equals 20 or uh, equals 20 uh, because this is a read-only variable. And you can say if I try and do this, it says property or indexes, indexer cannot be assigned to, it is read-only. So that's super cool and uh, that makes our code much more safe. So now when we hit play you can see it, it prints out 70 because we start at 100. Then uh, we call the damage method uh, which uh, subtracts our private health amount by uh, whatever we passed in and what we passed in was 30 so this is now equal to 70. And then down here we access uh, the property here. Uh, which is uh, this health variable, and that simply uh, gives us uh, the uh, value here. So it, it might look uh, kind of crazy to do all of this, but it's a very important thing to start doing. And uh, this is basically uh, the same as, as doing this. Some people like to do this on the same line, Let's just say uh, get, and uh, in here simply say return underscore health. 
and uh, remember the semicolon there. And you can see that that uh, looks a lot uh, s smaller and more compressed, but maybe not as readable. That's completely up to you. Uh, for now, I'm going to do it this um, uh, the other way because I, I think it's easier to kind of figure out what's going on. So that's super cool. But let's say that we want to get rid of this damage, damage method and uh, actually just want to change our variable uh, by uh, by using uh, the accessor here. So uh, at the moment we can of course only get our health. We can also make a setter for our health. We could just remove this and do uh, a setter and not be able to actually print it out. Uh, but for now we'll just keep this getter. So down here we are going to say set. And uh, the order in which you do this doesn't matter. You can create the setter before the getter uh, or uh, this way around. So the setter is, is pretty similar. And what we do here is simply we set underscore health. We set this variable up here equal to whatever we uh, pass in or we set this equal to. So uh, that value that we set it equal to down here when we say that we want to uh, uh, print out tom.health and uh, then we want tom.health to be equal to uh, 20. Uh, this value here, up here, will be called value. So that's the keyword for getting that right there. So uh, when we print this out here, tom.health, it should say 20. So basically this is the exact same as simply using a normal variable. When you create the standard getter and the standard setter, uh, it's the, exactly the same as simply making a public integer and using that. But we can do more with this. We, other than just limiting what, uh, whether or not we can get our set values, we can also uh, uh, change the way that we get and set a variable. And what do I mean by this? Well, at the moment here, when we change Tom's uh, health and print it out, it simply does so. It's, it changes 100 to 20. But let's say that uh, we want to kind of limit our health. Let's say that we only want it to go between 0 and 100. Because 100 might be our maximum health. And it would be kind of weird if our player could uh, just be healed infinitely. Or... Uh, be damaged so that his health uh, was su suddenly negative. So if we wanted to limit this health, what we can do inside of the setter here is we instead of just blindly setting, setting it equal to the value we pass in, we'll say that um, if health or uh, if, I'm sorry, if value uh, is smaller than or equal to zero, oops, then we want to set underscore health equal to zero. Else if value is greater than or equal to 100, well then we want to set underscore health equal to 100. And else, meaning if it's uh, not smaller than or equal to zero, or not greater than or equal to 100, so it's somewhere between 1 and 99. Well, then we simply want to set our health equal to value. So this might look very confusing to you, and I will admit that getters and setters comes with some syntax. But basically, what we can do now is amazing. So down here we can say that tom.health uh, minus equals 200. So let's say that we, he falls off a cliff and he takes 200 damage. Well, now we're ensured that he will uh, have a health amount of zero. And then we might, uh, let's say, want to uh, heal him by 400. Well, that will it, now we have ensured that his health will only go up to the maximum, which is, which is 100. So even though we write this, we've made sure that it only goes from the default 100 down to 0 and up to 100. So that's basically getters and setters for you. If we wanted to make this code even more pretty, uh, we could go in here and have a 
uh, a max health, uh, a private uh, int called max health, and uh, we could simply reference the max health uh, here and here, and uh, that would maybe be even cooler. Uh, but for now, I think we're just gonna stick with this. So I'm just gonna go over the code one last time here, just uh, to those of you who th still thinks uh, this is difficult. So what we're doing is we are defining this custom class called player. And the player is going to have a health variable. And uh, we create this, first we make it private, because we don't want to directly be able to access this variable. Then we set it equal to 100 by default. However, we want to be able to change the variable, just making sure uh, as we go along that it's going to be stay between 0 and 100. To do this, we create the normal getter that will simply return our health amount whenever we, uh, we want it. We also create a setter that will check if the value is within this boundary and if not, limit it to either 0 or 100. And if it is within this boundary, uh, boundary it's simply going to uh, set the health value equal to whatever was passed in. So if we down here uh, try and uh, write out the default health, it's going to say 100. Then we uh, subtract 200 and it's going to go up here and try and set it. And it's going to say that the value here um, is is actually less than or equal to zero and therefore we want to set it equal to zero and that's all it's going to do and then it's going to write out the zero here and then here it's going to uh, add 400 so it's going to uh, go here again under the setter and say okay so the value is not less than or equal to zero but it is greater than or equal to 100 so it's going to set health equal to 100 and it's then going to write out uh, that 100. Then down here, if we were to set health equal to 50 and then write that out, then it would go up here and it would say, okay, we want to set the variable. It's not less than or equal to zero. It's not greater than or equal to 100. So instead, we simply set it equal to the value we passed, passed in, which is currently 50. And then it's going to print this out by using the getter and returning the health. So I hope you really uh, uh, caught that and, and now know why uh, these uh, getters and setters are useful. And uh, don't worry, you'll master them in uh, no time. At this point, we've uh, come very far into uh, writing C-sharp code and you should be able to write most programs out there just using the tools you have now. Uh, from this point and on, it's, it's just about making your code uh, more uh, uh, reusable and uh, awesome. So uh, now let's run this the last time and it's going to print out 100, 0, 100 again, and then finally print out 50. Cool, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.